Hello, I'm Brian Cruz from the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. In the video on pinholes, you discovered that when you put a small hole in a piece of paper that you can project an image of a distant light source on a screen. At the very end, you discovered that when the pinhole gets very, very large, that the image becomes very, very fuzzy. However, it's very, very bright as well. One of the other things you discovered in the video is things like telescopes, your eye, cameras all have basically a hole where the light comes through. In a Galileo scope, as with many telescopes, that hole is filled with a shaped piece of glass that we call a lens. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how that lens influences the light that comes through the pinhole by using the same light source that we used in the pinhole video. In fact, let's take a look at the piece of paper that had the multiple pinholes in it and we'll bring it up here and we'll notice that each of the pinholes is creating an image of the red light and of the blue light. They're all a little bit fuzzy, they're all fairly dim, and we have lots of them. Some of them are even overlapping. Let's take this lens and what we're going to do is we're going to slide it in between the pinholes and the screen and voila! It turns out that we have a single image of the red light, a single image of the blue light. They're both brighter because we've added the light from each of the individual pinholes to create single bright images of each of the lights. Let's see what happens when we take the pinholes away. Wow! Look at that! We now have every single pinhole, not just those little pinholes, but all of the pinholes that are hitting the piece of glass, the lens, are all accumulating and making some very bright images, very sharp images, on the screen. We noticed that when we took the pinholes away, that the image immediately got brighter because we had a lot more light hitting the lens, which then organized the light into individual images. So, what do you think might happen if we used a smaller lens? We could make a prediction that a smaller lens is going to have less light available to pass through, and so we might anticipate that the image is not quite as bright. So let's see what happens. Voila! Indeed, the image is about the same size, but it's not quite as bright. And we can see through the shadows of the lenses there that one definitely is about half the diameter of the other. So it's about one quarter the size. So we're letting about one quarter of the amount of light through compared to the larger lens. What we discovered is that the diameter of the lens influences how much light is let through and thus how bright the image is that's formed on the screen. With this particular one, we had a nice bright image. There are, there's another property of lenses that's more important in many ways. Let's introduce another one that's about the same diameter, which means we have the same amount of light, but then it turns out that we have to move it much, much closer to the screen to be able to form a focused image. And so here we formed an image and it's much closer, the image is smaller, and it appears brighter because all of the light is being concentrated in a smaller area on the screen. This is called the focal length. These lenses, because they focus at different distances from the screen, they have different focal lengths. And that's a very important property of lenses. What we've discovered is that with a telescope, such as the Galileo scope, that the very large pinhole at the end has a lens in it, which we then can be used to project an image on a screen. We notice that the image, much as with the pinholes, is inverted, upside down, and left, right, reversed. So, but with a telescope, such as the Galileo scope, it has not just the single lens, it has another lens, an eyepiece, back here at the back. So what does the eyepiece do? Well, one of the things that we might think about is what happens when you have a lens and you bring it very, very close to your eye and you look at something that's very, very close. A telescope is designed to look at very, very distant objects, which make sure that the light rays are coming in parallel and 
we can form a nice image there. But when you bring a lens up very, very close, and I think that everyone has done this when you were a kid anyway, and we discovered that they're very useful as magnifiers. We can do the same thing with the, with the telescope. Basically, we end up having an image on a screen. And then down here, we have the eyepiece, which can be used to magnify that image and make it larger so that we can resolve small details in the astronomical phenomena that we're investigating. With the lights off again, let's take a look at a little bit different setup, this time using two lenses together. We also have introduced a different kind of screen, one using tracing paper so that we can see the image on both sides of the paper. So I'm right now looking from behind. I can see the image very, very sharp of both the blue and the red lights, both of them upside down and left, right, reversed. I'm going to take the magnifying glass and I'm going to come down here really close and I'm going to magnify the image and make the image a nice, big image. But telescopes don't have screens, and so if we remove the screen, voila! The image is still there. No screen. I'm seeing a nice, bright, magnified image with two lenses working together to form a simple telescope.